The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Stars and Strikes Double! Park Place Lanes at Wyndham, featuring outstanding Campbellton bowlers from all over New England. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Campbellton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi everybody and welcome back to Championship Week here on Stars and Strikes Doubles now. We've got one championship decided and now time to do the other one. Doug Brown and Dan Murphy and uh, set to decide it now in women's doubles after a great finish last week uh, setting up today's championship. That's right. Uh, Lynn and Kathy trying to make it two in a row and with it goes the championship and we've yet to have, as we mentioned <laughs> at the close of last week's show, nobody win two matches in a row. All right, let's talk about our two teams then. They are the two top-seeded teams going into this tournament. First of all, the number two-seeded team, they won a dramatic come-from-behind victory last week from Manchester, New Hampshire, Lynn Perrin, and her partner from East Kingston, New Hampshire, Kathy Fuller. Okay, uh, Lynn comes in averaging 110, and her roll-off score was 618. Kathy Fuller, 109 and 583, and uh, our hats go off to both of them. They chipped in with a strike each. And more important, they were right in a row last week. <laughs> yeah, last week, if you missed it, uh, they came from a 33-pin deficit in the third game, uh, including a very critical double strike, each of them throwing a strike in that sequence. And then uh, Lynn Perrin got a big spare with a, a fill enough to win the match last week in the 10th and final box. So now they will go for the championship and the $800 first prize money against our number one seeded team from Concord, New Hampshire, Janet Pock, and her partner from Peterborough, New Hampshire, Janice McIntyre. Okay, and Janet comes in averaging 120, her roll-off score at an amazing 665. And Janice comes in averaging 100, and her roll-off score is 578. And for Janice, her first appearance on the program, Janet Pock has been here several times before and has been bowling very well on the uh, Candlepin Tour as well. We're going to have our championship match. We'll get it started. Three strings of ladies' doubles, $800 to the winners, $400 to the runners-up, and we'll get to it here on Stars and Strikes Doubles right after these messages. Don't go away. Here we are. Championship week, number two seeds, Lynn Perrin and Kathy Fuller. Trying for two wins in a row, which has been difficult to do the last few weeks here on Stars and Strikes on either show. Janet Pock and Janice McIntyre, the number one seeds, have been waiting for this chance, and now they will have it. Lynn Perrin, start the match. And uh, if you missed the end of last week's show, it was Lynn Perrin who put her team into the championship with a big spare eight in the final box to complete the comeback against Debbie Regan and Tony Austin. And if you missed a single show, Mike Morgan has qualified for the Tournament of Champions. And later on in the show, we'll uh, give you a preview of who's coming up on the single show. Yeah, we already have the uh, qualifiers for the next series for the men's uh, at noon, starting next Sunday, as we'll go into our fifth series, looking for our fifth qualifier to the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, and we'll give you a preview of that a little bit later on in the hour. A pair of tens for Lynn Perrin. And now, safe to say, one of the hottest bowlers uh, on the ladies' WCBC tour, perhaps the hottest, Janet Pock. Been tough to beat the last couple of years. Couple of years, right. She's won a lot. And she'll shoot at the 6 7 10. Oh, oh almost, try. almost. <laughs> Janet's average, as Dan mentioned earlier, 120.
Oh, pulled that one a little bit. Janet works for New Hampshire Optical Company in Concord. One, three, five, eight, ten. Nice and the ten goes for the spare. Stubborn ten pin. Clears the other four out. Comes a piece of wood, second piece of wood. And finally the ten pin goes down for the first mark of the match. Off the bowling of Janet Park. And now Kathy Fuller. Just caught the head pin on the way by on the Brooklyn side. Leaves the diamond, but the wood in the back makes it a completely different shot. Certainly does. A little easier, too. Got to catch the front one, though. Nope. Had to catch the three pin. Twenty-nine through three. This time, light on the head pin on the other side, leaving the two, five, and seven again with wood. Let's see. Oh, too bad. <laughs> Looks like she hit it pretty well. Left the seven pin. And on it for the ten. And that will bring us to Janice McIntyre, making her first appearance here on Stars and Strikes. And she comes up, working on a mark. That's not bad. First ball you throw on the show is on a mark. <laughs> and you miss the head pin, but you drop eight and leave yourself the one and the nine and get a chance of making a second one, and she does. Right on the head pin, drove it straight back. The team of Pock and McIntyre with the two marks in a row and an early lead. Janice slipped off to the left that time. Janice comes to us all the way from Peterborough, where she does most of her bowling at Bowling Acres out there. Works as a machine operator for New England Business Service. And she qualified uh, in 10th position. She was the last qualifier in this roll-off with a 578. Oh, big first ball for Lynn Perrin. The score is uh, at the bottom part of the... Uh, oh, right on it. Lynn's right on the spear. The score is at the bottom part of the list. 10 bowlers that we took for this series uh, were closely bunched. Uh, Lois Queen finished 5th with 596 and Janice McIntyre was 10th with 578. And then just two pins behind her, just two pins out of the money was Robin McDonald at 576. Beth Miller was at 575 and Tony Marie Baldinelli was at 574. Lynn Perrin looking for two in a row and can't get it. She had to come up high in that wood. But of course, it, chances diminished without hitting at all. That's what would happen. She was trying to play right on the end. Janet Pock and Janice McIntyre with an 11 pin lead. Opposite of Mark. And Janet will shoot at the one, two, four, and eight. No. Took care of the eight, but the four is still there. Janet's last time with us on Stars and Strikes was a little bit over a year ago, January of 91. She paired in a mixed doubles event with Gary Carrington, and they lost a very tough match to Jack Sanek and Peggy Tosi, who wound up winning that series. And 
this thing is going to be just about even after the first six. Nine for Janet, and a two-pin lead for the team. Kathy Fuller. Lane 32. Kathy's ball, it, it's almost agonizing the way it, it seems to reach for the pocket every time, and sometimes it doesn't look like it's going to get there. That time it did, but she didn't get much of a result. Well, she's got some wood that she can play. Looks like the red line in that first piece of wood. The wood should take the 6-10, and hopefully the ball will carry into the 7-4. Looks good. Yes. Spare in the seventh. Second spare for the team. There it is, right on the red line. Seven. Chance for another, the one, three, nine. Let's see. Yes, yes it'll sir. go. Two in a row for Kathy Fuller. I think that win, that come from behind win last week did all wonders of the world for the team of Heron and Fuller, because they seem like bowling with a lot more confidence this week. Janice McIntyre now. Yeah. Ooh, she's right on the wow. head pin. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be a seven box. So the lead swings to Perrin and Fuller by eight. <laughs> Cluster of five, one, three, five, eight, and nine. Eight box, so Lynn Perrin will step up with a chance to extend the lead. It sits at 10 right now, plus whatever she can put on this spare. The spare left by her partner. On the head pin a little full. Two, four, six, ten. Try to cut the two and the four. The two jump over if she can. got it coming off the wall. They'll increase their lead to 16 pins through eight boxes. It's an eight. 108 with one to go. $800 to the winners. 400 to the runners up. And let's see. It'll be the two, make it the three, four. Well, with wood. nice turn oh. of the wood there, although this other wood may cause a problem in the back. No, maybe not. Well, you never know. <laughs> Could stop the wood, the wood on the right from going across, but her concern now is just hitting the wood next to the three pin. She's high on it, mm. too high. Well, let's look ahead to next week real briefly. Next Sunday at 12 noon, we will begin a brand new four-week series of both men's singles at noon and men's doubles at one. And in men's singles, the first match of the series next week at 12 noon will be Reggie DeLine against Al Bolduck. And there is a big strike for Janet Pock in the ninth. Big strike is right. She really needed that. See the ball dead in the 1-3 pocket. Just a matter of time before the 10 pin goes down for the strike. Wow. 
just off target that time, but she'll shoot at the one seven. Got a good break off the head pin, leaving just the one and the seven. And the way the wood is situ situated there, she hits the head pin. She probably will complete this as a spare. And oh, no. oh boy, <laughs> I thought she sure had it all the way, part. Dan. <laughs> there was now never a doubt about it. Well, they may take the lead here. One fourteen plus a ball. Reggie DeLine and Al Bolduck next week. Reggie DeLine, our number five seed. Al Bolduck, the number four seed. We'll fill out the rest of the ladder for you after our break. A six fill for Janet Pock and a 120 for the team. So Pock and McIntyre with a two pin lead after one game. Two to go here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Don't go away. Janice McIntyre will start us off here in game two. Stars and Strikes Doubles Championship Week of our Ladies Doubles Series. And the team of McIntyre and Pock leading by two. Oh! Almost. <laughs> oh, hang on. And it'll be a 10 box. Started to say before the break, next Sunday at noon, it'll be number five seed Reggie DeLine against number four seed Al Bolduck. The number three seed in that series will be Gary Carrington. The number two seed is Steve Vadney. And the number one seed is Tom Morgan. Interesting possibilities there. Yeah, because his brother Mike is already into the Tournament of Champions in both singles and doubles. That'll be a nine box for Janice and a 19 opening pair. <laughs> Kathy Fuller will start this second game for her team. Looking at the three, five, six, ten. Would she try to slide this wood over the far wood? No. No? Oh, who needs the wood? What, are you kidding me? Maybe you and I, but <laughs> we're not Kathy, no. <laughs> that was the fourth mark for the team. Just the four fill on the spare. In fact, each team has four marks right now. Looking for the spare, got it. You could tell as soon as she let it go that it was on the right track. There's a the replay. Boy, just like they were tied together. It just went down as one. Very nicely done by Kathy Fuller. Two in a row. Janet Pock, <laughs> I think, expected more out of that first ball. She's looking at the 7-8. Directing traffic a little bit. Nice yes. Oh, great shot. And a spare. Good shot. Just got by the front piece of wood and snapped the wood against the 7 pin into the 8. She would love to see that seven pin go down, but it won't. Gonna try to. Well, I guess just not. Ooh. I don't know if I would have gave that wood a ride in front of the seven pin. And it'll be a nine. 
Now Lynn Perrin comes up working on a spare. And has regained the lead, at least temporarily. She'll add to it with a fill on the spare. But she also faces a spare six. Whoa, going to the left. Nine bucks. Well, the lead is one now for Pock and McIntyre. Well, how about the four and the six? The wood is rolling out in front, which is it should be a help to her. Either end, I'd probably go try to go four pin side, clip the wood as you're going by. Oh no! Boy. You know the actually the one the piece of wood in the back killed the shot for. Her. That's what makes this game so great. You never know what's going to happen. We will take a timeout. We've got a very tight match. Just one pin the difference. Janet Pock and Janice McIntyre in the lead at the halfway point. Don't go away. Janice McIntyre. Sliding by the head pin. See if she can fly it over to carry the 10. Inside almost. Still looking at two pins standing, the two and the 10. Not too bad considering where it started out. Got everything in the back. Still looking at the one, two, three, six, ten, and the seven pin also. Oh, this may go. This may go. <laughs> nope. And the head pin's still there. So a couple of open frames. Opportunity for Kathy Fuller. The team trails by one in the match. Kathy crossed over that time. Well, one, three, six. Yes, it'll go. Stubborn, the six pin, a little stubborn for her, but I think that's because of the wood. Slid it over and finally knocking it down, big mark in the fifth. Kathy has thrown five consecutive marks. Her last five boxes up there. Makes them up one time, Come on! And a chance for six. It's funny in doubles, you, one of the partners catches hot, gets hot. Could carry the match. There it is, oh. six marks in a row for Kathy Fuller. <laughs> Janet Pock up on lane 32 for the seventh and eighth frames. Oh, nice. big, right big there. first ball. Leaves the five and the eight. but this wood could be troublesome. Well, it's not gonna move. It's directly in front of the five pin. It's gonna play it like it isn't there. Just straight back, hope she caps it, drives it back. No oh. shot. Off the wall this time. Got it moving and it very, worked for her. Very nicely done. Pull that one left. Half Worcester left. Only two on the spare. Go, 
Looking for it. No. Nine for Janet, 82 through eight for the team. And now Lynn Perrin comes up and if she can get some marks on the board, uh, <laughs> he's already got a very warm partner in Kathy Fuller. Leading by 10 in the match, 12 in this game. You heard the crowd, come on in there. They were talking about that piece of wood that came in behind the one and the two. Should help her with a shot. She's on the head pin, maybe even kick forward. No, not quite. But the team of Perrin and Fuller right now have the largest lead for either team in the match at 14. And as you said, Lynn liked nothing better to leave a, par uh, leave a mark for her partner who has had six marks in a row. Try to show us one here. No. Eight bucks. Janice McIntyre to finish out game two. For her team. Janice is having a little hard time up there now. She'll throw the ball and she'll shake her head so she knows she's just out of sync right now. Missing the headpin with that first ball and really pushing it. That's a good ball. No break though. Five, seven, eight, nine. And that wood doesn't appear to be turned quite enough to really be of help. One end or the other. Snap the wood. I could probably go left. That looks pretty good. Yes. Hey, how about that? In Very the, nice. In the tenth. She'll stay up to fill it. Just when you think one team is going to run away and hide, that team puts a couple marks up. So, and it's going to be a good fill. Wow! Again, not much off the head pin. 108 and 228 for the team through two. Well, Kathy Fuller is on quite a roll right here, so we'll see if she can continue it. Testy four horsemen, right, one, three, six, ten. See if she can make it seven marks in a row for her frames. Looks pretty good. Oh, and it is. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. Look out. Well, this one will be even a tougher shot. Six fill. Well, she's on the three six side of the tr triangle. She'll have a chance, and she's going to have a chance at it, Doug. Whoa! Oh. Wow. <laughs> well, that breaks the string, but seven marks in a row. Well, again, we're going to have to uh, check the computer. The uh, final score in that second game, it's a 123 for Perrin and Fuller and a 108 for Pock and McIntyre. So it's a 13-pin lead for the team of Perrin and Fuller after two. And we'll be back to settle the doubles championship on Stars and Strikes Doubles in a minute. Well, Kathy Fuller is going to lead off this third and final game. Again, just to re review those scores. Uh, Catching up during the break, it's 241 
for Perrin and Fuller. And 228 for Pock and McIntyre. It was a 123 for Perrin and Fuller in that last game to 108. And uh, Kathy Fuller, who has marked in seven of her first yeah. 10 boxes, <laughs> is uh, making every shot interesting here right now. And, and the team elected to let her go. That surprised me, huh? <laughs> yeah, have Kathy go first. They, uh, they've switched their order. Of course, the teams have that option in the third game. And the way Kathy is bowling, uh, not a surprising decision. time it doesn't catch up to the head pin. Half Worcester right. Playing it inside. Good effort. have a, a lead like this you don't want to give a mark back to your opponents by not pinning and last week and this week the team of Perrin and Fuller did pin well mm -hmm. now Janet Park up for her first of six frames in this final game she will be the first bowler 3-6-10 but she also has the eight pin No. The in eight box. Again, if you missed it earlier, Mike Morgan defeated Tom O'Brien 410 to 351 earlier today to advance to the Tri State Mega Bucks Tournament of Champions in singles. Mike had already made it in doubles. Janet threw her hands up there, so she got a better break, but maybe should have, but she does have a spare lead with the wood. Looks good. Yes. It wasn't really that big a deal. <laughs> it looked a lot more difficult than it really was. The wood was all set up. What she do is hit it. That was a great shot by Janet Park, marking the second. Team trailing by 13. Lynn Perrin now. Lynn's had a tough time finding the head pin. One, three, and nine. Well, if she's, she's going to find it, she'd like to find it right now. And she does, but leaves the three. <laughs> but you want to find it when you're not quite so full. <laughs> and attack. 27 through three. trying to bail out of this box. It'll be a seven and an opening for Janice McIntyre. She'll be filling the spare put up by Janet in the second. What a spot. Did you see her first appearance on the show? And what a spot to be in. Not a bad fill. One, two, and seven left. Seven pin drop on the spear. Moves them to within five. Lose two and count on that box, so the lead is seven. Remember, Perrin and Fuller had the 13 pin advantage coming in. Oh, there's a big first ball, but look at the result, 5-10. Janice has had some very tough breaks on what looked to be very good first ball deliveries. Well, either real high or grab the five pin and slap the piece of wood off the wall. Nope, missed the wood altogether. She can 
gain back those two and count, drop it to five, she can pick up this 10 pin. It'll be a nine. We will pause right here. The difference is only five in the match with six frames remaining. Should be a great finish here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Don't go away. Well, we've got quite a match going here to decide this championship. Kathy Fuller just missing the head pin. Now she converted this four horseman on the right side just a moment ago in the last string. One, three, six, ten. Just missed the head pin. All pins are big now. Ten. Again, you must maintain your concentration on these third shots. That's right. You don't want to give that mark back, as I mentioned earlier. Kathy gave that one a little extra spin. Oh, it it seemed, a big strike. And she got the strike, kicking out the five pin. She put a little extra turnover on that ball, I think. All the way over into the Brooklyn side. Well, it almost looks like it goes cross lane, and then it backs up a little bit, breaks a little bit from left to right. Janet Pock trying to answer. A little thin on the head pin that time for Janet. Two to five. That strike, Seven and ten. That strike, by the way, was the uh, first for the team of Fuller and Perrin after eight spares. And Janet will get the nine. Nine box in the fifth. Critical box right here, the sixth, because she's opposite a strike. And of course, this sets up the final rotation, and she's going to get the seven pin. And that wood in front may be out of play. I would say it is. Joe Pagley is going to check it out. <laughs> Janet's trying to push it. <laughs> It's not she moving. She should be fortunate what she got. She missed the head pin. She's got the seven, ten pin with a plank in front of it. <laughs> oh, Janet's directing. Okay, Janet is directing the one that's behind. Yeah. Oh, the, yes. yeah. Yeah. I thought she was trying to direct the one in front to go down and uh, get back onto the plate. She's uh, She was concerned about the one in, fr uh, in back. So, and it looks like it moved a little bit for her, actually. Yeah, it moved closer to the ten pin. So she'll pick this up for the spare and opposite the strike already put up by Perrin and Fuller. That leaves things on a single digit differential going into the last four boxes. This match has been tight all the way. Neither team has really been able to break out into a lead. Perrin and Fuller had a 19-pin lead toward the end of the second game, but a big spare in the 10th by uh, Janice McIntyre at game two cut that lead down to 13 going into this third game. And like Janet, missing the headpin, but got a decent break. The one in the eight, uh, I say one in the nine, working on the strike. Too far left. An eight box. So Lynn Perrin will slide over to lane 31 for her final box of the day. And then she'll have to sit down and watch <laughs> the rest of it. What a helpless feeling that must be. You have to watch six more boxes after you're through. And as far as she's concerned, only two for the good guys. <laughs> well, again, missing the head pin. All pins important now. Nine, 79 through eight. So it's a two mark lead. However, they have one mark already posted to spare. So they need a big fill and at least one more mark. 
<laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that ball in the one-two pocket looked better than a five fill, but that's all she's got. Three, five, six, nine, ten. Tough shot. Oh, yeah, yes. and she's got it. Two oh, in a row. What a big spot, too. Could have been the biggest mark of the match, at least as far as Janice is concerned. Big Phil gives her team the lead. Let's see. She's done it. Pock and McIntyre take the lead, at least for the moment, by one. Now this, of course, now is a spare leave. I would say both teams are kind of uh, off the head pin with that first ball, but they certainly are there with the second ball. Three in a row now, and the two big marks by Janice McIntyre. Last two boxes of the match now. And Kathy Fuller, who's been really bowling very well all day, goes up for her final two, knowing that she's got to put something up there. Needs a break on the six pin. Won't get it. She's got to cut the two and the four with the wood behind the f between the four and seven. That might cost her those three, though. No, oh, very nice try, but she's going to need a mark at least. She's going to need a mark, and then hope she gets some help from Janet, which you can't count on. <laughs> Eighty-nine in the ninth. They've had only one mark in this game, Perrin and Fuller, and that was Kathy's strike back in the sixth. They desperately need one right now here in the tenth. Well, Kathy will have something to shoot at. The 3-6. An unobstructed look at it. And got it. She's got it. Now the crucial fill. I would say she'd have to get at least seven in hope. She'd probably like them all. And it still may not be enough. And it'll be a six. Nine marks for Kathy Fuller in 16 frames in this one. 346 for the team of Perrin and Fuller. So 118 ties. They're at 114 clip right now, plus she has a ball working. So as long as she doesn't uh, make a big mistake on this spare, she wouldn't need another one. Well, that's going to keep it tight. She will not have to mark. 119 wins it, so 210 boxes would win it right now. This is a very tough conversion for a 10 box, though. And she's going to have to do it with a mark in the 10th. Need a mark now. A 10 will tie the match. So if Janet throws a 10 here, we'll have two extra boxes. Well, what could you ask for? Any more than this. Final box. Second week in a row. Yeah, she missed the head pin, but let's see. She wants the head pin to stay up. It will. The 1-7-10 with Wood. Should go. Uh, at least has a chance. He's just thinking, I want one of those three, the head pin. And after that... Yes! yes. Oh! And Janet knows it. All she needs is two... Or rather, one. All she needs is to keep this ball on the lane. On the lane and no lob. And and that does it. Nice and easy. It's only a three, but it doesn't matter. Wow, two weeks in a row. Great finishes. 121 for Pock and McIntyre. The total, 349 and a three-pin victory over the team of Perrin and Fuller. Well, they won a close one last week. This week, it goes the other way on them. Stars and Strikes doubles. Great finish in our championship. We'll award the checks and talk to the bowlers in a minute. And welcome back to Stars and Strikes doubles. This applause for 
Kathy Fuller and Lynn Perrin, who came up uh, just a little bit short. <laughs> Slide right in here so that we can see you both. We have uh, the runner-up checks for you. You're splitting uh, $400 second place money. And, uh, well, I guess live by the sword, die by the sword. Uh, you had two similar matches there. <laughs> I know it. It was real close. Well, you bowled uh, terrifically well, Kathy. A lot of marks. Uh, it seemed like for a while you were hitting everything. Well, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Lynn, uh, again, third game, uh, you had the yeah, you had the lead, and uh, uh, but uh, had had a couple of marks at the end, but just not quite enough to hold them off. Not good enough. Bowling nightmare come true. I didn't fall down though, so <laughs> that's two weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Well, again, congratulations uh, on the win last week and on a terrific performance, and uh, we hope to see you both again. Thanks a lot. All right, Lynn Perrin and Kathy Fuller, thanks very much. And now let's have Janice McIntyre and Janet Pock come up as we got the big checks to give away now. One for you, Janice. Congratulations. And for you, Janet, uh, as you split the $800 uh, first prize money. And, uh, well, I guess uh, it was nice just kind of sitting back there and watching your partner uh, go up and throw that big mark in the 10th, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I had a struggle at the first, and Janet really carried us. And finally, I got my ball going towards the end, and we both got together and did what we had to do. Well, Janet, you made it a little tougher on yourself there in those last two, having to get that mark for the win. Oh, yeah, well, the, the ball in 32, I kind of buried it, and it just left the cluster of five, and the next one that I missed the head pin, and I happened to have a little bit of wood with the 1710. Well, again, uh, congratulations, a terrific finish. That's two weeks in a row we've had uh, great finishes in this series. Uh, congratulations for winning the first prize money, and uh, we hope to see you back again soon. Thanks. Janet Pock and Janice McIntyre, congratulations. And uh, let's bring Dan Murphy back on here for some final comments. Couldn't ask for uh, two better finishes than we've had these last two uh, Sundays on Stars and Strikes doubles. Absolutely fantastic. Right down to the final ball uh, each day, and uh, it was great. Well, we're going to uh, pick up with brand new series now in both men's singles and men's doubles next week. And uh, we'll start it off at 12 noon next week uh, with a new ladder in singles, and it will be uh, Reggie DeLine from Needham, Mass., against Al Bolduc of Meredith, New Hampshire. Well, two balls have been with us before. Always fun, and... Uh, I'll be looking forward to it. As of right now, we don't know who the bowlers will be on the doubles show, but, uh, of course, next Sunday at 1 o'clock we'll be able to tell you. And we hope you'll be here for two full hours on the winds next Sunday at 12 noon. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 Sports crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Lane.